Rob? What up, Doug? Good morning. How are you? I'm I'm good. Um, you have made a healthy living, healthy living, off of stating uh, hard truths, some that most of America believes, some that America does not. Uh, coming off of Monday Night Football, what is the hard truth? Who is... Where, where is it so so quiet you can hear a mouse urinating That's somewhere? Right. You, on all those former players who believed that you didn't need any coaching experience and that the Jeff Saturday hire was the correct hire, and they were hoping and wishing. The Colts haven't won, Doug, but I'll tell you who won. The coaching profession has won because the Colts are a mess. Uh, Jeff Saturday has been a disaster. And I, quietly, they won't say it. I remember Bill Cower on CBS. He first ripped the Jeff Saturday hire. And then, of course, he won his first game over the Raiders. Remember that? And everybody was yeah. waving the pom-pom. You know, uh, your dad was a coach, right? Doug, brother's, you come from, Brother's a coach. He's been coaching. Brothers, okay, so years. you know what I mean. You come from a coaching family. And it was a narrative that you didn't, ah, oh, none of that mattered. Uh, you don't need to, you just need to be a leader of men. And and if you played the game, people will respect it. No, there's some coaching involved. And so I, I think the Jeff Saturday experiment has set that back and that the coaching profession, while they might not gloat about it or talk about it, they're very happy that he's been a colossal failure. Yeah, the, the problem with that is uh, we're talking the same day that Nathaniel Hackett was fired. And he was as prepared as any human could be for the job, and he just wasn't good enough. So I'm not going to argue with you that the Saturday thing, especially the past couple of weeks, the roof has fallen in. They were very competitive, you know, and found ways to lose leads. Uh, it's not a good football team, and maybe that's maybe that's what all of this does. Is it? It's like a bait and switch. We don't even realize. Like they don't have a left tackle. They clearly don't have a quarterback. Um, there's so many positions. They're not very good outside the numbers of wide receivers. And yet people were myself included in on the Colts, potentially, you know, winning that division. Um, obviously before the first coaching change, I, I would look, I, I would push back against you. Do, are there things that you need to learn in coaching? Absolutely. As a guy who interviewed for coaching jobs without head coaching experience, uh, I can tell you that I, I am fully aware. There are things you only learn from doing. Um, but the, the flaw to the argument of, well, see, you got to have coached in order to know how to coach is, okay, so what's, what do we do with the Nathaniel Hackett deal? Dad was a coach, grew up doing it. Everybody swore by him. And it just, I mean, again, on the same day he gets fired. Right? Well, well, the argument is simple. Everybody's not going to be successful, even if they take the steps. That's not my argument. I mean, just because you did do all that doesn't mean every everybody can't be successful. People are going to lose, right? Good coaches are going to lose big games. Marty Schottenheimer lost a lot of big games uh, when he was a head coach and, and other guys who were lifetime coaches. So it's not that. It was just the idea that other people should skip the line and not put in any work. And I, I get it. It's happened in the NBA where a couple guys, I remember when Larry Bird got hired, but they gave him Rick Carlisle and Dick Harder, you know, like as his they assistants. Didn't, they, they didn't give him. They, they didn't give him. That's a. That's honestly the best point anybody could make. Is like, look, uh, and and this is with Nathaniel Hackett, right? The guy who takes over for Nathaniel Hackett is the guy he hired out of retirement to help him manage the game. Well, didn't that, that say something, Doug? Even after week one, that you had to hire that guy. I mean, yes, I, I, was, yeah, I was. Yes, but 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 here's the thing. Yes, of course, it, it's like what you can't manage the game yourself. Right, you do it. Right, I, I get I get it. But but the but the point that you're making, or at least I don't know if you you know you're making it, but you're making a really good one. Is like if you don't know, hire somebody who does. Right. I, you know? I was I was in Detroit when Matt Millen got the. Uh, GM job, right? And never worked in the front office at all. And and Matt Millen talked a good game on television. You know that, Doug. He was sure. good. He was good. When you heard him talk about players and, and the, the things, it just was like, oh, this guy knows football in and out. The Lions hire him, right? Finally, and they got a football guy. Got to won four Super Bowls. Oh, man, Matt Millen. And he didn't bring in some veteran GM or somebody, yeah. you know, who was retired or who could show him the rope. So he was going to do it himself. And arguably, he's the worst general manager in the history of sports, okay? And that was another one of those situations. You just can't turn the keys over to a 13-year-old to drive your new Mercedes, and he didn't have a driver's license. That's well, what I'm against. 
Look, what, what happened with the Colts is, remember Ryan, Griggs, Ryan Grigson, who is their general manager. And, and, I mean, it's interesting. Last night they're playing against Tom Telesco. Telesco was in the building with the Colts. You know, Bill Polian re- retires. Right. You know, and so they, they choose Grigson, who's their top scout. And the logic behind it was, man, Grigson so gets such a good eye for talent as a scout. Like, the rest of the stuff, they take care of itself. But everybody in the Colts building can tell you, like, it was a disaster because he didn't know all the little GM stuff. Right. You know? So, so here's the thing with Saturday. I don't, I don't think, I thought the Saturday experiment, I think a lot of it was they were just trying to figure out, like, all right, let's, let's just bring in a neutral voice to tell us who we like, who we don't like, because we're going to have to change this thing. The problem is he hires a guy who's never called plays to call plays. Like, right. If you're, if you're not going to have experience, Thank everybody you. else damn, be, damn well better. Yeah, that, that was the big mistake. When they, when they hired him or, you know, elevated, I was like, that doesn't make sense. You need to go get, a couple of veteran guys, somebody yeah. who can help you, not another guy who's trying to blindly lead you and put you in that situation. And the numbers, Doug, are horrific. I mean, and, and here's another part. I don't, I don't know if you've seen these uh, about uh, second halves and, and what they've done. And they're all ugly. Like they've been outscored 83 to nine. Yep. Um, do you, do you have them in front of you? Have you seen those? I, I, okay. I don't. I, right, I, I don't. This. But- here it is. Let me give it to you. Okay. Uh, since uh, Saturday took over in week 10, the Colts have been outscored 66 points after halftime. We talk about adjustments. It's even worse in the fourth quarter 83 uh, and 9, 83 to 9. And even worse, the last uh, two weeks, 55 to nothing. So there's just in the, in the second half and later they had, in games. And they had, they had nothing yesterday. They had no yeah. offense. Zero. The Chargers. They, had, they couldn't protect the quarterback. Nick Foles looked awful. I mean, they are so bad in the interior five, and then at their quarterback, it just is just bad. It, it's interesting because we went through a good portion of the season where everybody was five hundred. Remember that? Yep. It was like four weeks ago, like everybody was five hundred. Like, damn, like, and then now all of a sudden, Waters found this level. Like, you know it, right? You know, like the the Chargers, though they're still not healthy, and they're still you still have you know, as a guy who's like a long suffering Charger fan, you still don't really have complete belief that they'll do it when they're supposed to do it in the playoffs. The fact is like, they're just better than the, they got just better dudes in the Colts. They're just, just better, you know, and the, the bills and the chiefs and the, and now there's a separating. Now there's still like a clump in the middle of somebody has got to win the AFC South. somebody has got to win the NFC South. Right. Right. Th- those, those two. But with that as the exception, and the playoffs, there's too many teams in the playoffs. This is what we do. The NFL has now become the NHL and the NBA. Terrible. Ter- this is what I'm always against, and people always like, more is better, and everybody's in the mix. No, you, you, that's not the league you want. And you also got to be very careful to uh, make it to where the regular season doesn't matter as much, you know, or, or you could just be mediocre. That's what I was against in baseball. I know they've upped it. I don't want it to get to the NBA or the NHL where you want to almost totally disregard the regular season, you know, and be like, oh, if, uh, most of the teams, other than the Lakers, everybody knows who's going to make the playoffs in the NBA, just right? <laughs> just about because 15, how many teams make it? Uh, 16 of the 30 teams make it. So I, 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 I don't like the oversaturation of the playoff. Nope. No, but it, it's it is here. It's it's not the future. It's now, and so now we have this kind of separation. All right. So the Colts clearly in the coaching market. Uh, and can he get a job? Saturday should be ruled. Uh, you know, I heard the uh, they had a one on one with Jim Ursay. Did you see that on ESPN yesterday? Mm-hmm. The one on one, and and basically he he didn't dismiss Saturday and that he should be in the mix when they hire when they do the coaching search. I, I don't think, think he's. I don't think he's done a terrible. I think. I think the numbers that you're sharing, they've obviously done a poor job of adjusting. But I think it shows, and they've hopped out over people, which is the game planning has been very good. It's just. I mean, they. They just don't. I mean, like, look, it doesn't matter what you do if you don't have a quarterback. You ain't got no shot in this. See, league, see this but I, I agree with. I I get all that, and and the reason, and then people use that. Well, what do you expect them to do? It's a bad team. Well. Those are usually dug the jobs that open up, right? Uh, like I hear people say that. I don't even understand. No, the team that's in first place got rid of their coach because they're so good and they got rid of their coach. No, the teams that get new coaches are bad. 
So most coaches come into circumstances where where it's a mess and we need you to fix it. That's why we're hiring you. So that argument is is ridiculous. But anyway, I think he should be um out of the mix. I, I really do. I don't I don't see how other than being friendly with Jeff Saturday, he should qualify for that head coaching job. I think he's he's extra self out. Now he has experience. Yeah, bad experience. Though. Well, he has, he has experience. I, I, I look. I, I think it don't look first, bad if he gets hired. Maybe, maybe it depends. Again, we're all saying like, does he just roll over the same staff, or does he say like, look, I learned I, I got to have more veteran play caller. I got to surround myself with some more veteran people. I need to do this, do that, the other thing. I mean, I, I think that's that, that's reasonable. Do I do I think he gets it? Probably not. I think Jim Irsay wanted him to get the job. I think he wanted him to. And I think there's a lot of things they've done that he probably likes, but I, I the, the likelihood he gets the job now is especially after these last two. And and I mean, he could you know, have he could have gotten a job even without winning because Doug, when you talk about setting a culture and and you know in the building or whatever, those are things that that you really can't put your finger on or sure. or you don't see. Sure, that, that's where you don't. But you don't know. How do you know? No, what, uh, right. Setting the culture or not. I, I, but the difference is. You got to be like competitive. They could have lost these games, been competitive, and then have Jim Ursay tell you, "Yeah, but in the building, you know what I mean? Like we've changed the call. He's changed the culture. Look how hard these guys are competing." They, they, blah blah blah. They they were com- they were uh, in in fairness, they were competitive last night without uh, so much of an offense. They had just no offense. You know, I mean, they just did did. They could not protect Nick Foles, and that's remember that's the Chargers without Joey Bosa. And now the, the Chargers defense playing very well of late, but the just Chargers without Joey Bosa. That, that shouldn't happen. But they could not protect him at all. So it, I don't think last night they weren't competitive. I thought last night the final score was not addictive. It was pretty. It was one of, like one of those games where you're like, the Chargers going to screw around, let this team hang around, and then finally like, yeah, we'll put they, them away. Better, as long as there was no backdoor cover, because last night was a banner night for yours truly, and I needed them to win. Uh, so I was pretty that, happy. That was an easy Chargers in the under. That was an, that was an easy well, same the, game yeah, parlay. Yeah, huh? I took the Chargers minus the three and a half. Uh, but you never know. You know the NFL that half point and sure. like you say, somebody sticks around and throws some meaningless touchdown at the end. You know what I mean? And then before you know it, you're out of the out of the loot. But it did not work out that way. It worked out the good way. All right, we had we got a couple weeks left in the NFL. I, I think the the big news. Of yesterday was not that the Colts stink and that the Chargers are now suddenly in the playoffs. We have to rework, rework some of those hot takes on on Justin Herbert. Well, no, Justin been... Herbert still has to win. I mean, I, I get it, and I don't think that it, I think people love him a lot because he looks like the prototypical quarterback, and he has a big arm, and he's talented. There's no doubt about it. But I think people had a right to say, okay, well, it's time to start winning some games and getting into the playoffs. So he's how done many, that. How many Charger games have you watched? Uh, two or three. Okay, well, I've, I, watched, I've, I've watched. I've watched. I've watched every one of them. I every, got, well, yeah, every, but you listen, have no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's like both. Like, I've, I've honestly, it's a weird experience for me because outside of Oklahoma State football, I'm not really a fan of anybody. I'm just never. I've just never. I, you know, I've never been a super fan. That's just not how my. I, I like players well, more than. than, than I, teams. I'm the same way. I've been doing this for Doug. Uh, January six will be my 37th year in the media, which okay, is okay. So this uh, is this okay. Is 20, 20 for me. So you and know, I'm, and and I've I've since I started at the Daily News in New York in 1986. I've my fandom has been gone. Like I when I go to a baseball game with my friends, Doug. This is no lie. And and we're at the game, and somebody for the home team, wherever I'm sitting in Detroit, or if I'm at the Dodger game, or 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 in New York at Yankee Stadium or or City Field, and somebody makes a great uh, play or hits a home run, everybody jumps up except for me, and I'm just sitting there, and people try to high five me, and I feel weird because I'm not a fan in that sense. I I'm with you if I get to know people. On a personal level, am I happy for them and their success? Yes. But I don't lose any sleep over who wins. The story I want, the story I want is the best story for me, you know, as as a reporter and what I'm covering. My my, my, my point is I've, I've watched the Charger games, and anybody who watched the Charger games will tell you that, that the wins and losses are technically quarterback stats. No guy has, has done more to help a team win when the team has figured out ways to lose than Justin Herbert. Like it's, 
it, usually it's been a comedy of errors, you know, kicking issues. The defense has been atrocious until late. You know, for his three years, they've been a, atrocious. You know, bottom th- bottom third in the league in stop and run. They couldn't get off the field. And then he's had a litany of injuries. But H- Herbert is obviously Burrow has been the best of that of that class. He, he, Herbert, I got to give him props. I I didn't think they make the playoffs this year after the run they had. You know, like it's happened before. Where guys, no, usually the team that right? loses the Super Bowl Don't, struggles right. more than the team that wins the Super Bowl, and that's been the opposite this year. And and you know what? And they they lost, lost their first, chase for a couple weeks, right? And and uh, uh, Mixon and and they were zero and two and what two and four? And look at where they are. Joe Burrow is is pretty special. No, Joe Burrow's a, a dude, and I I believe Herbert's a dude. Obviously, Mahomes and Josh Allen, like those are the new kind of young guns in the NFL. And I think Lamar, like well, like Lamar's in that mix. He just hasn't been healthy, and they they just haven't been right. But they still they got ten wins that are right there. Like that's the that's the young wave, right? That that's the young wave that that of the next generation as as this older generation, like we're seeing Matt Ryan and obviously Nick Foles and Tom Brady, they 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 age out. 